Battle of Stalingrad, which began in the middle of September 1942, ended in January 1943 with the cutting off and the liquidation of Hitler's Sixth Army. Frontline pictures of the final phase. and sickle of the Soviet Union, slashing at Hitler's military arrogance, pounding the battered remains of his encircled divisions. This is a newsreel record of what may prove to have been the turning point of the war on the Eastern Front, perhaps the turning point of the whole war, with men of the Red Army finishing off the would-be conquerors of Stalingrad, mopping up German survivors in and around Stalingrad, finally crushing every point of resistance. <laughs> Lieutenant General Batov greets General Rokossovsky and Marshal Voronov. Rokossovsky, the famous Don Front commander, Voronov representing the Soviet High Command. Two of the leaders who won a victory that will not be forgotten so long as war itself is remembered. The battle is drawing to a close. Russian artillerymen fire point-blank at the last stronghold of Germany's doomed battalions. and sickle of the Red Army completely broke down the enemy's will to fight, and the Russians are reaping the reward of their gigantic efforts, as at point after point, whole detachments of German troops give themselves up. Now the white flag of capitulation has taken the place of the crooked cross. The survivors of a German army of over 300,000 officers and men have had enough. And that goes for the surviving German generals too. Here they come. Lieutenant General von Daniel, commander of the 376th Infantry Division, surrenders with what's left of his force. Lieutenant General Sarnen, commander of the 100th Division, Hitler's pet boys since the work they did in France and Belgium, General Sarnen surrenders. Brigadier General Romulus Dimitriou, commanding the 20th Romanian Infantry Division, is brought in to surrender with some of his staff. Together, 24 of Hitler's generals surrendered in Stalingrad. Lieutenant General Schlemmer, commander of the 14th Tank Corps, surrenders. Major General von Dreber, commanding the 297th Infantry Division, surrenders. Lieutenant General Rinaldi, commander of the Medical Corps of the 6th Army, surrenders. German generals, trained and practiced in the German school of war, beaten at their own game. There goes von Daniel on his way to the headquarters of the Soviet general, Talbuhin. And 
what have the Russians got next? None other than General Field Marshal von Paulus himself, with Lieutenant General Schmidt, his Chief of Staff. They too have surrendered. Paulus is the first German Field Marshal ever to have done so. Now he's got to face interrogation. Berlin said he was badly wounded. Then they said he was dead. Actually, he was quite well, except for a twitching eye, which you'll see if you watch closely. His interrogation was held in General Tolbuhin's office, a number of other Russian leaders being present. The Russian say von Paulus gave orders that no Red Army prisoners were to be taken. Now he's a prisoner himself. That he forbade Germans to surrender. Now he himself surrenders, with his army. This is the actual order of the day issued by Stalin. Congratulations and thanks to the Red Army men of the Don Front for their excellent fighting. A simple message from the Commissar for Defense. A simple message marking the greatest victory of the war so far. A victory that has meant the crushing of an army, a great blow to German military prestige, an open wound in German morale that no talk from Nazi leaders can really hope to heal. prisoners surrender and shuffle off into captivity. Some of them wounded, some frostbitten, all of them beaten. Over Stalingrad, the red flag flies again from one of the few buildings that still stand in that ruined city. Yet Stalin's ruined city has itself started an avalanche of ruin that will one day overwhelm the Germany of Hitler. <laughs>